Today I will be talking about the basics of the map in Windy App and what it can do for you. Uh, when I say a weather map, this is what you usually think about, but um, it can also look like this. This is the weather fronts and precipitation layer. And this is also a map in Windy App, and that is Ocean Currents Map. And I want to show you how you can turn this on and um, turn this off as well. <laughs> okay. So the very first, very basic thing is to change the main parameter on the screen you see. This is where you find it. Uh, you will see an icon for the current layer, and then you uh, tap on it, and it will uh, show all the available layers. Those are winds and gusts, uh, precipitation and accumulated precipitation, swell, ocean currents, and for iOS users also, there's sea water temperature. So three other basic things are the timeline. It is the thing at the bottom. It gives you, this is how you go through the forecast. Uh, it's 10 days, it's usually 10 days forward and in the pro version you can get 10 days um, of past weather then at the top you're going to see uh, the color palette that tells you exactly what the colors stand for and there is a unit like this is kilometers per hour uh, so that way you know exactly what you're looking at and there's a this little icon at, at the bottom uh, it's how you access the settings Another thing you can change, and this is quite important too, uh, it's the source of the wind forecast and the gusts forecast. So we have six weather models on the map. Three of them are global, which means they cover the entire world. Uh, GFS 27, I ECMWF. Um, so GFS 27 is the American model, as some people, as some users call it, then ECMWF is the European model and ICON 13 is uh, produced by the German Weather Service. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, and we have three regional models, Rome, NAM and HRRR. What is special about regional models is it's in their name. It means they only cover a certain part of the world. For example, what you see on the screen now is the HRRR, and it only covers North America, the USA. So if you switch this model in Europe, in Australia, you will see no forecast. And you might think, what the, what's going on? Why is there no forecast? Is Windy Up broken? It's not. It's just this HRRR does not cover your area, and you need to switch to a different model. The next basic thing is the live mode. Basically, it's the current wind observed, it's me measured by a weather station and displayed in the form of this oval, uh, color-coded. So in my, in my screen, it's the 7.7 .7 meters per second of wind. Uh, the, it's the latest observation from a weather station. Now, why would you need that? Well, first of all, it's handy because you don't need to click on the weather station icon to check each uh, to see what what is the current observation but there's another thing you can use it for let's say you want to uh, sail out today or do something else outdoors today and you need the most accurate wind forecast you turn on the live mode and then you remember what I told you in the previous slide that you can change the weather the wind weather models on the map so this one has wind from GFS 27 and this one has wind from Arome and we can see that the colors of the Arome forecast is much closer to the colors of the GFS 27 forecast this way we would know that Arome knows something, knows uh, what's going on today, exactly what's happening now better than GFS 27. 
And if we want to make decisions, we would take the AROM model into uh, consideration more than the GFS 27. Um, I've heard, uh, so, so this is a real case. Uh, I heard that sailors use this live mode in combination with the different models, um, to check before sailing out. I'm just sharing with you. Maybe you will also find it helpful. Okay. I right, let's move on. The next thing is also quite basic on the map. You can find a spot. And you uh, do this with the search icon at the right corner, in, in the top right corner. And I'm going to show you how this looks in action. Okay. So we tap on the search icon and then we type in something we want to find. And the app will suggest all the spots with that name. And then we choose one. And then it's going to zoom in and show you the spot and the current wind forecasts there. But we do not have to have a spot. You can actually um, tap anywhere in the map and see detailed forecast. And even more, you can create a spot yourself. If you tap on this uh, plus sign, you can you tap there and then you um, you can name the spot and you can make it private or you can make it public so that everyone knows this spot. So um, what happened uh, to me more than once uh, when I was actively in user support, people would uh, leave a review like, you don't have a, your app is not great because it doesn't have my spot. And then um, I would say we do have lots of popular spots, but even better, you can always create your own spot. And you can, for example, share it with your friends. You can um, post it on your website, for example, or your Instagram, if you are a kite school and uh, promote it that way. So it's, it's all very flexible in the app. Now, speaking about spots, sometimes the map becomes a bit too crowded because we have spots for more than 10 uh, outdoor activities in the app. So if you want to narrow it down um, and make it less crowded, you al also go to the settings. I'm going to play the video again. You go to the settings. And then there's something called spots on the map. And then you choose which ones you want to see. This can also make it more easy to use for you. Something else you can do is in the settings, you can change the transparency of wind. Why would you do that? Sometimes you want to only see the wind and sometimes you want to only see the land or you just have your own personal preferences. So what does happen, I'm going to play that again, is that people start exploring the app and then they click everywhere uh, and play around with the toggle uh, that ch changes the transparency. And then, for example, they don't use the app for a while and then they open the app and there's no forecast. And then they will contact our user support and that's, that's, a, that's a good case. And they would say, what happened? Is your app broken? There is no forecast. And we say, can we, you please send us a screenshot from the settings on the map? And then it will be just as easy as pushing the transparency back where it should be. Okay. Um, so the last thing, the last big thing is the atmospheric fronts and isobars on the map. They can also be activated in the settings. Now, isobars, it's just a fancy word for atmospheric pressure lines. Those are the black lines and they help us see where the highs and the lows are. You will see a little L uh, letters for the middle of the low and little H letters for um, 
the middle of the high and then you will also see so th those are available globally and for atmospheric fronts we have them for the for the for north america and europe at the moment so we don't have them for anywhere else unfortunately but if we find a good source of re a reliable source of data we'd love to add it uh, and i uh, hope to see you soon please like this subscribe and there will be more coming soon okay so have a have a great rest of the day